The Distinguished Graduate Award is obviously a very prestigious award and I'm honored to receive it. It's uh, in large measure based on a recommendation from your class as reviewed by a committee and that's why I'm humbled by this whole thing. Well, I'm very honored and very humbled by the uh, recognition and I'm very grateful to the selection committee. I know they had many wonderful graduates to consider. To be selected as a distinguished graduate is an amazing honor. Even to be part of the Naval Academy and an alumnus of the Naval Academy is an increasing honor. So for me to be selected and be considered as a peer among the rest of the, of the previous graduates is, is, is an amazing honor. The Distinguished Graduate Award is presented to a living graduate of the United States Naval Academy whose character and distinguished service draw wholesome comparisons to the Naval Academy's core values of honor, courage, and commitment. These graduates have provided a lifetime of service to our nation and our Naval Service and have demonstrated unwavering support for the Naval Academy. This year, the Naval Academy Alumni Association has chosen to honor three individuals with the award. Distinguished graduates are the embodiment of what we strive to achieve in the U.S. Naval Academy's mission. That mission, which has evolved over our 170-year history, makes us who we are. We prepare men and women for a career in the sea service. This is a special day when we celebrate those who have been here before us and recognize the best of the best who have and continue to make our Naval Academy a flagship institution. In Plebe summer, we would come down here every Saturday evening and watch Victory at Sea, which is guaranteed to put a chill down your back when you realize you might be able to go off and do something like that for your country. Uh, and then all of the things that uh, went on at the Naval Academy, not only the studying, but the making of new friends, the camaraderie, uh, the summer cruises, uh, going out in the middle of the ocean and realizing just what a small thing you are in this whole world. Uh, I just got navy blue and gold early on. And so here I am. No one in the class of 1951 can match any of you when it comes to Twitter, Spotify, Facebook, or the latest social media phrase, but we were imbued with the capacity to learn. Those who were the most successful among us kept learning, and so should you. You'll be leading some of the finest young men and women the nation has to offer. Rest assured, they want to do a good job. That's why they joined in the first place. Your job will be to make it easy for them to do that good job. And for that, I offer you a short recipe. Make sure those who you purport to lead know what's expected, that they know the goal, the individual goal and expectations for every man and woman in your charge. Then be sure they have the training to reach those goals and expectations. See that they get the proper schools, then train them yourself if you must, and in many cases, you probably should. Lastly, get out of the way and cheer them on. If you can do that, you'll be successful in your Navy or Marine career and beyond. The Naval Academy had such a profound impact on me in that the training that I got here was uh, very helpful to me in my professional career in the Navy and uh, in the private sector and in government. And uh, I think it's the greatest institution <laughs> in the country. A leader is trusted. A leader takes the initiative. A leader uses good judgment. A leader speaks with authority. A leader strengthens others. Leadership is the ability to start from anywhere and influence everybody that comes into your path. And the other advice I would give them is that as midshipmen and as young naval officers and later in life, they will be very busy and they'll have a lot of balls in the air. 
And three of those balls, however, are crystal. And if you drop one of those, it's a major problem. And those three balls that are crystal are your family and your friends and your faith. And those things should be cultivated and protected and nurtured. I wish each one of you fair winds and foul seas. God bless you. God bless this great institution. And God bless America. The, the Naval Academy prepared me for everything that I've done uh, is, is a fair statement. Um, uh, and I've thought about that a lot. I think the major difference between, um, say, going to an Ivy League school and the Naval Academy is, I mean, the math and science are the same, but the leadership skills are not. They're not taught at the other institutions, and that's what's made the difference in my career. I would say to the brigade these days that uh, the, the career that they will have, they probably can't even imagine. Uh, things are changing so rapidly. So they need to be prepared for change. And um, I think they're gonna leave the world a better place. I've decided to discuss four lessons for my life that might apply to you. Lesson number one is that the lessons outside of the classroom may be more important than those inside the classroom. Lesson number two is about unexpected turns in the road. Uh, Yogi Berra said that when you come to a fork, take it. Um, in, in 1971, I was admitted to Stanford where I thought I would major in chemistry. However, I got a draft number of 50 and thought that it would be better to come to Annapolis and I uh, matriculated in the class of 75. I'm quite, quite certain that had I not gone to the Naval Academy, I would have had a productive career as a chemist, but that I would have never developed new cancer therapies. It was only the road through the academy that led me to cancer research. You have to take the unexpected changes in life and look at them as opportunities. Lesson number three is about bringing together orthogonal disciplines to bear on a problem can then solve previously unsolved problems. So know that you are getting great training here in Annapolis. Um, use it as you go out to begin your career and your adventures. Know that your life is not always fair and that you will often fail. But if you take some risks, you will have those advantages to take those to challenges and never give up. If you do those things, you will leave the world a far better one than we have today. I'm confident of that. You can change the world. Well, I'm very optimistic about the future of the Academy and the quality of men and women that are coming into the Naval Academy today. Frankly, I think I'd have a very tough time <laughs> qualifying for admission today because the competition is extraordinary and the men and women who are here have the potential to do great things for our country and the government and the private sector and, and industry. This is where our roots lie. This is where we learned what made us successful in uh, later life, whether it be in the Navy or in something outside the Navy. It's appropriate that we pay back in some way, and we can pay back by cheering at football games or other sports, or we can pay back with uh, monetary support if we can afford it.